All right, let's explain the scenario here, okay? Let's just assume that this guy is in the stovepipe box. See the stovepipe? This guy is in the match box. This guy is in the Apache box. Each of these guys has a guy in their gap, and we're explaining zone here, okay? But it really works for power too. You have this gap to your right, you have this gap to your right, you have this gap to your right. There's a man that's clearly in each guy's gap, okay? Uh, the only difference is here's where the back is running, and he's trying to bring the linebackers to that spot, okay? And this is the deal here, okay? Now, if you just, if you just look at this, if we're running right here, this man has got leverage on him. And green light for us means go get him. Go get him. Okay. Well, guess what? This guy's lined up. He is winning, right? He has to block him. He's got leverage on him. Okay, great. Now, most people will say, well, just go get him. And we don't want that. If he's green light, we think we have a chance to stretch him out. And what we want to do is stretch him out by attacking or matching his leverage. Now, his leverage happens to be in the gap and outside away from the read spot. So what we want to do is stretch him. And we used to just brace and step deep. Okay, and all this footwork, you have, you have to watch the other video or else you're not going to know where you're at. But now what we do is we downshift. We just take a little lateral step. And what we're trying to do is get this guy to move a little bit that way. And if we can do that, okay, we can go get him and we have a bigger hole. Okay, so when we're matching green light, we want to downshift. And that's just the way I tell the kids. You're, you're in the match box. You're matching a green light. Downshift and go get him. Okay? And if you do it right, you could throw him. and uh, You can whack him and throw him and go get him. All right. Now, if, I'm not going to talk about if he spikes and all other stuff. That's I'll have to do scheme with you. This is just concept. Okay, now, here's the read spot. This is where the back's going. But what we say to this blocker in the stovepipe is if you can get in front of this man, right in front of him, the back will cut off your block. Okay, that's as old as the hills. That's Vince Lombardi, run to daylight. What we want to do is cover this man up. Now, the question is, how do you get in front of someone who's not in front of you? Well, you know, like guys will say, well, you just go get them, lead step, this, that. Well, it's great. It's just that if, you, if he doesn't want you to get in front of him, he'll bend that back, back into this hole, and he's got the whole posse chasing, and we don't like that as much. Now, maybe you can knock him back and all that, but if you can knock him back, just turn off the video. Because uh, you don't need you don't need anything I got to say, you know. Just get your guys to knock them back, and and everybody's happy. And trust me when I tell you, I'd prefer that to anything. Okay, but what we do is we scoot, we take two negative steps without making our weight go backwards. Okay, and that usually puts us in a chance to get in front of this guy. So it's sort of an arc, and it kind of gets like that. Okay, but we want to cover him up. Now, if we can cover him up, if he widens, we're, we're going to stay with him, cover him up until we can get him to the read spot, and then we can throw him into the match area. We're in great shape. If he spikes inside, we want to stay with him till we feel somebody that we can't see, somebody on our blind side, hit him, and then we can work off. The whole thing, though, is to stay square because as soon as you turn any which way, You've limited your options. Okay, so the scoot allows us to get in front of somebody who's not in front of us square. And we cover by taking our helmet stripe and putting it past his helmet stripe. Now, that doesn't mean way out here. It means like right there. We're going to run off of your block, dude. That's the way it goes. Okay, this guy here, you're going to match. You're going to go right to his headgear and no further. You want to control his inside with your inside hand. Try and stay as square as you can. Throw him if you can. It's great. Okay. The only difference is if this guy spikes, we're staying with him. Okay. Until we feel somebody grab it. Okay. 
If this guy spikes, man, we're blocking him. Okay, we ain't going to worry about the linebacker. And we'll feel the thud. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, that's just the difference. It's more aggressive. We don't want to give up leverage. And we'll wind up on the backer. has to come to us. Okay. All right. Now, this third green light, and these are all green lights now, is Apache. Okay. And Apache, what we're trying to do, again, is keep this man from getting to that read spot. Okay. And, of course, if we cover him, and he just stands there, everything's good. We can match him, he stands there, everything's good. But generally speaking, they want the ball. They're not that interested in what we're doing. So what we, we come up with was we encircle him, like the Apaches encircled General Custer. We go where he's going to beat us, not where he is. And if he'll cooperate and stand there, we'll just stretch our arm out, play in his shadow until somebody hits him, okay? Okay, we're just going to keep him, we're going to be in his shadow, we're going to, we're going to stretch our arm out, okay, and be in his shadow, and shadow him until somebody hits him, okay. Now, we can either use arc, where we turn the tank, so our shoulders are here, but then we have to square up again when we can win, or we can skip, and I think in close quarters, skipping is not as good, because it's hard, it's hard to, um, it's hard uh, to stay condensed or low, okay? But s s skipping is faster and wider. You can cover more ground in two steps than you could ever do arcing, okay? So for big spaces and fast players, I think skip's the way to go. For big fat guys, you might want to consider arcing. We give the option, we give these guys the option to do either or, okay? That's, and that's green light, okay? in the three areas, all right? Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the pace red light, okay? And again, it's in the three areas, the match area, the stovepipe, and the Apache, okay? And here's our three blockers, and they have linebackers. And then green light means there's a guy in your gap. He's yours. Go get him. Red light means there's no one close enough to strike you without you going to get him or him coming to get you. So in other words, you're uncovered. Okay. And if you're uncovered, you generally speak and have the backer. Now I've drawn each backer with lever, uh, even leverage. Okay. But you got to understand that when the back runs to the read spot, the backers, again, they want him unless they've got something going on, a stunt, or they know something they're doing in the secondary or what have you. They're going to move where the back moves them for the most part, okay? So let's just, what we want to do is, and red light, when you come to a red light, you don't turn your motor off on your car. You, you wait, okay? You don't stop the car. You wait until the light turns green. So what we try to explain to the kids is when you are uncovered, you probably have the backer, okay? How long can you wait before you go get him? And when you're waiting along the line of scrimmage, you can help out Johnny or Billy, okay? You, you can help them with the with the down lineman. So in other words, here's a, here's a guy here right in the middle. He's got a down lineman. Okay, if you go get that linebacker, you can't help him. And, and the linebacker will, will hang around, okay? And he's fairly predictable. Unless he blitzes, okay, and you don't want to turn your shoulders in case he does, you can help somebody else. Red light. Wait. We say too soon. Leaving too soon is, is, is worse than being too late. Okay. Too soon is too late. That's what we say. Now, going to the match area, again, we're running at this read spot with the back. And we're assuming that the linebacker is going to move towards the read spot just because you would think so. Okay. We would prefer you to step with your outside foot to help outside first, okay? Um, we're going to do that no matter what, okay, and when we're red, okay, and it's red light, okay? Now, we're going to definitely use a match step, and we may have to rewind and go right back in there, okay? If it's a, if it's a blitz, okay, like that, Okay, we're going to have to rewind for this, this man spiking out. 
And if it's a blitz where this man spikes in, and go, you, you should be able to rewind and pick this guy up right at the line of scrimmage or before he ever gets there. But first thing we want to do to match is we want to downshift. Then we want to go and match this dude. Okay, so if he if he starts to flow, we got to match him. Okay, if he stays outside, well, guess what? We can help out and match him. If he stays right in front of us, we want to match him. Okay, and matching him is just that. We're matching him. We're down the middle of him if we have to be. Okay, or if we can be, rather. All right, but we want to match him. Okay, and once again, if we go right now and he, he goes in, we can't help the guard. So we take that little step. It's almost like a timer step. We call it a downshift. It's like... You guys don't know what downshifting is because you're all too young, but uh, us old guys, you drive a stick shift, you downshift to slow the car down, okay? It's almost like using a brake. And we want to take that little lateral step, figure out what's going on, then go get them, okay? Now, if we're stovepipe, guess what? We're pretty much doing the same thing, okay? But we're very reluctant to rewind, Okay, and what we have to do is before, instead of taking a downshift, we have to assess what's outside of us. Okay, now if there's a, a, a hard guy on the line of scrimmage and he's a threat to our gap, okay, we want to step as deep as we have to, not downshift, we want to step as deep as we have to so that we can pick this guy up if he spikes. All right, we don't want to trap him out because we don't want to trap in the stovepipe we want to get in front of this guy so if he if he spikes to us we want to be able to get in front of him when he spikes he becomes a three technique is that correct yes okay if he spikes out great we got a path to the back backer and we can go get the backer and cover him whatever path we have to take to cover him now this step in deep is called a brace and we may even have to shuffle a step okay but generally speaking what we've gone to now is this if there's no immediate threat, we would let that man downshift. So, because the chances are, if there's a real wide guy here who's not an immediate threat, we have a chance to downshift and someone will protect us from the outside in. Okay, but more than likely, we're going to get some noise coming from the inside out. So, the downshift allows us to rewind a lot easier. Okay. But once we've determined that there's no threat to our gap, nobody sneaking attack, no intruders, no, no safety blitzes, no ends looping, nothing like that, okay? And we'll never shuffle more than three steps with the right foot. One, two, it's actually six steps. But we don't even do that anymore. It's more like, it's more like one, two, one, go. All right? And you'll get a feel for it. And all this depends on the depth of your back and the style and path. So I don't want to get too specific on that. But basically, if you understand the concept of red light. Now, he wants to stay square, and so does he. Because as soon as you turn, if that man runs through, you got a problem. Okay, you want to stay as square as you can for as long as you can. That's what we literally say to these guys in red light. You want to be as square as you can for as long as you can. Because if you turn, it's hard for you to rewind. Okay, if you're, if you're facing this type of movement, Okay, if your shoulders are turned, it's how you gonna, you got to go backwards. We don't want that. We want you to just be able to return square and pick up whatever you can on the line of scrimmage. Shut it off. Don't let it into the stovepipe. Okay, and shut that backer off. Make him go wide. All right? Same thing here. If the backer goes over the top, like so, over the top of the next man, all right. Even if that man doesn't spike, all right, let me draw this a little better. Even if that man doesn't spike, the backer went over the top. Well, guess what? You're kind of trapped in there, right? Well, blow a hole in it. Okay. This he's probably being blocked by somebody else. Turn this into a double team and plow him, plow him open, and make that back and the linebacker come back to you. Now there, we don't mind turning once we realize. Okay, we take our brace step. This backer goes running out of there. Something's coming back. Your guy goes out. Something's coming back. Guaranteed. All right? Okay, and that's a way to make the hole a lot, a lot wider for the back. Okay? That's, again, red light with the, with the linebacker going over the top. Obviously, if the linebacker were to fill, 
you would cover him just like he's a down lineman. Okay. Now this last one, this is where the skip really, really helps. Okay. Assuming that there's no one within striking distance, there, there's probably guys here and here. Okay. Well, to cover ground there, all right, of course, if you turn your shoulders, you can cover ground. You won't cover it as well with, with the arc as you would with the skip. Okay. But why, by skipping, you keep your shoulders square. So if there's any kind of end backer game, you can rewind and hit that end. Okay. And of course, it's very easy, very easy for that, for that pickup. Okay, so you want to use the skip step in big red. Okay, that's what you want to use. Big red, big open spaces. Okay, and, and ideally, this, this man right here, okay, he's playing in his shadow, and you'll get an overtake, and he'll get up on the backer if the backer decides to flow that way. Okay, that's using the skip versus red light. Okay. Okay. We're back um, now we're going to talk about yellow light and again in the stoplight analogy you, you you see a green light you go guys in your gap he's yours you know he's in your gap it's not technique don't say five technique was well, a tight five or what no I coach I think he's my guy I think he's in my gap I'm gonna go get him red light coach I, nobody can touch me unless they t unless they attack me, and I can't touch anybody unless I move. Um, nobody hard is within arm's length of me. Okay, I'm on red light. Now here's yellow light. All right, and let's just go to the stovepipe guy real quick. In zone football and gap football, he's got the gap. Well, this guy's not in his gap, and he's you know so he's not green light. Now, he could be shaded outside, he could be shaded inside. But you've determined that he is close enough for you to touch him. With, he's in, within an arm's length away from you. Okay? But he's not in your gap. So what are you going to do? Well, if you, if you go in and protect your gap, okay, just go. Just run off the ball like, um, like you know, you've heard guys say. Well, you got a little problem there. Uh, he may attack you and, and cancel you. You don't block anybody. He blocks you, and the guy's got to block him, and the linebackers, uh, you know, they don't know what to do. The linebacker's free, and the guy you got to block him, he's chasing him, and the linebacker's just standing there, okay? He blocks you. Now, if you go at him right away, okay, uh, it, it might be good, but if somebody hits your gap, Who's going to pick it up? This guy can't, and this guy's occupied. Let's say there's a twist. So what you've got to figure out a way is to protect your gap and protect yourself. And yellow light, the analogy is this. When you're driving and you come to a yellow light, you don't just go and you don't just stop. You decide. Okay? And once you decide, well, I can make it, I'll go, or I can't make it, I'll stop. You've defined what you're going to do. Well, guess what? That's why we call it yellow light. Okay, and let's just go from here. Now, assuming that there's no help from anybody, let's start with the match guy. He has got the read spot, okay, is here. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's A gap, B gap, C gap, it doesn't matter. He knows that on the blind side, away from where his gap is, the gap that he shouldn't be looking at is, where, is the read spot. That's where the back is going. Now, the leverage is in green light and it isn't red. It's yellow. So if he doesn't know what to do, he can step downshift with his inside foot to protect the read spot. Okay, that's what he has to do. Okay, and he just downshifts. Now, when you downshift, you're automatically creating an angle, and we're we're all into angular force. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to oppose guys head to head. We don't want train crashes. We'd rather hit them at angles. Well, guess what? You've created an angle. Okay. Now, if you do this and you stand up and you, you're not condensed, or you take a big step, or you don't you know you don't play with your hands in front of you, this guy will probably run you over. 
But if you if you condense and downshift with your butt low and your hands in front of you, he's got to move. And guess what? You grab him and flip him, which is another angular force, a circular force, and you've got a, a pretty good chance to, to run him. If he stands there, guess what? You can probably go back and widen on him. Okay, and if there's any kind of game or stunt, if he slants out, rewind to the outside, and somebody will be coming back in. All right? So it's pretty simple stuff. All it is based on is leverage. Leverage is advantage. And right now, nobody has the advantage. Okay, so that's the match area. Now, if this man is red light and the backer is his, okay? So in other words, the, the backer, his backer, okay, there's a man here, and his backer is in your box. The backer's in the match box. You can opt to hay bale, which is a double team, okay? You can say to this guy right here, I'm going to just put him here. You can turn and say, hey, help me out. I'll take this guy. You can help me on your way to that guy, okay? And this guy doesn't have to be nose up or it just has to be... <laughs> the backer, his backer is in your box. Okay, you got yellow light and you got a backer in your box. Pretty simple, really. Okay, what you want to do is downshift away from your help and make a brick wall, a brick wall. You don't have to move this guy an inch, but he can't move you. And you got to get your hands on him. Okay, and you got to grab him and wait. And this guy is going to come over and cow tip him. Now, when we cow tip to the inside, we usually move the outside foot first. And I can't see why you wouldn't move the inside foot first, but we don't do it. We just downshift, okay? And we just think it's, it's a little bit more controlled. And we smack this guy with our hands, okay, on his hip or ribs or somewhere between his hip and his, his armpit. And we try to knock him and define him into this guy's gap. And he takes him and just... Throws him like he's a bale of hay, throws him out. Okay? We only use the hay bale, the hay bale, in the match area when we know we can keep this defender out and the backer is also in the match area. Okay? All right. And it's got to be his backer. I'm not going to tell you how to figure out who's who and what's what because that, you know, that's that's secret, but it ain't real hard. You can count guys. So, well, look, if, if the first two guys are, are here and you, and you have the first two guys and that, they're both in the same box, well, let's hay bale this thing. Okay. We do that, use that on yellow light, again, to define him and bring the backer to the read spot and to the un uh, uncovered blocker. It's very pretty and very powerful. Okay. Do not turn your shoulders when you hay bale. Okay, it's not a plow. You're using your hands. You're pointing as long as you can. You're knocking this guy out, and the backer is going to step right up and come to you. Okay? All right. Now, if it's yellow light in the stovepipe, we want to cover. Remember? Well, it doesn't take very much to cover. Okay? You, you, you want to get your head... Your, your, your straight past his straight, well, it's almost there right now. It might, might even be lined up like that. So you don't have to go very far unless you perceive a threat from the other box into your gap. Okay, whatever threat you have, let's just say that, you know, you'd have a guy, I'm going to leave this guy right here. You'd have a guy right here and there's a, there's a, uh, this is, let's say you're the guard, you're the tackle, and there's a tight, what we call a giant end, okay? Jet end is way out, giant end is real tight, okay? If you have a giant end, you step as deep as you have to to get in front of him if he comes in. We got all those guys like that, we got problems, okay? We just got to sort that out, but you know that the posse is coming, okay? And as long as you stay condensed, you won't get knocked around. Okay, you can't stand there and stare at the guy. But just remember this, okay? You got the green light, you know what to do. You got the red light, okay? You know what to do. Yellow light, okay? You got to decide what to do, and you got to get this guy defined. Now, generally speaking, if you downshift, it's the same thing as, as when you step with the inside foot. You've created an angle, 
on this man and you want to stay square okay and the next guy okay if he sees this and he's probably coming from the Apache if he sees this he's going to put his hands on him and define him it's going to be a lot like uh, the hay bale okay All right a lot like it it's just that he's going to be more aggressive because he's probably coming through Apache and he knows that he can skip or whatever okay he can get there he, it, it, it doesn't hurt him to turn his shoulders as much okay so your job is to cover him well one little downshift covers him unless there's there's a immediate or a more immediate threat to the outside and then you have to step deep now if you know that that man is if, if you're the guard and that's a tackle we're going to Indian this guy now nobody has to step deep because you know that this guy's stepping with his inside foot right no big deal okay you just got to know who's got that gap your gap who's got it do you have it or do the next or does the next guy have it okay and he's got to tell you Indian is a call he says he says I'm stepping Indian man I'm I'm stepping with my inside foot okay now in C gap run there really isn't an Indian okay this is really for a gap run but that's that's the way we do it okay and you want to cover this guy up and try to flip him try to try to induce some angular force of course if he comes with you you grab him and flip him murder him he's on one foot go get him okay you're not going to go get anybody if you're not dragging your tail end of story so so forget about it okay the whole thing is to engage square grab him and and flip him and stomp him pound him out of there okay now I think that's pretty easy okay yellow light in the Apache okay nobody has leverage we still have to encircle and we can either skip or arc if I'm a center I've got to arc but as soon as I can get as soon as I can win I want to square up okay and play in his shadow I want to play in his shadow I don't want him cross my face I don't care if he does this I don't want him cross my face to the read spot okay don't want it to happen okay and I don't want to just go smoking out of there and let, unless I feel somebody overtake okay I want to encircle him and play in his shadow and I want to play with a long arm I could even rewind and chip I could dip my shoulder and chip that's called a Mayweather okay I can I can do all those things I really don't care if you arc or skip but I I think I'd rather arc you especially if you're the center you can't skip okay I'd rather arc you for a step you're gonna win almost immediately okay if you're any good and if this guy spikes you're gonna brain him you're gonna hit him right in the ear hole of his helmet and knock him and you can you can take him towards the read spot as long as he doesn't take you towards the read spot you're in business but you've got to establish leverage play in his shadow establish an angle angle and cover up possibly Indian maybe hay bale okay and it's, it's pretty simple stuff okay that's I literally that's the way I talk to players now like I said I've been doing this for a long time uh, you know th this language has come it's been a struggle okay but it's complete you can't fool me I've always got a word or an answer for you and it doesn't take me that long to remember it how do you like these little diamonds here that's supposedly supposedly line scrimmage I guess this guy's lined up off sides here usually the defense lines up off sides but what we we're talking about there is how fast should we go the concept of pace is never full speed okay we're never going to go full speed we're always going to wait or pause or we're going to take little steps okay but we are going to go full throttle full throttle okay we're in first gear second gear very seldom are we in third or high gear or overdrive or anything like that okay we're not trying to win a race this is not an indy it's not an indy 500 it is a demolition derby okay and there's chaos and if we're caught out of our fundamentals if we're caught with our feet in the air okay if we're caught with our tail up in the air and if we're caught with our arms close to our body we're going to get knocked around and we're not going to be able to do any work and remember work is moving your guy 
All right now this stuff evolved to pick up blitzes and we, we've done that pretty well okay so um, give it a shot uh, hopefully uh, you know uh, you've understood what I what I did there and we'll go from there bye